Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Mukta Martulia, Assistant Professor at School of Media, Film and Entertainment, Sharda University. With a decade of experience in both industry and academia, I have been associated with many global educational institutions and media organizations. I am also a recipient of the Best Media Educator of the Year Award in 2021. Today, in this module, we are going to discuss gender and new media digital media and identities. So, let's get started. The points which we will cover today are idea of gender, concept of new media and digital media, defining digital culture and digital identities, examine how new media portrays gender, explore the role of digital media in constructing digital identities. So, let's start with understanding the idea of gender. When we say gender, the meaning that comes to our mind is female, male, the third gender or the other gender. Then what is the meaning of sex? Are gender and sex the same or they are different? And if yes, then how? So to understand the similarity or the differences between these two terms, we should first get into the in-depth meaning of these terms. Sex is a biological characteristic including genetics, anatomy and physiology that defines humans as females and males. While gender is a socially constructed set of roles and responsibilities associated with being a girl or boy, woman or men and the third gender or the other gender. Gender influences how people perceive themselves and the others, how behave and interact in the society. Therefore, Femininity and masculinity are culturally determined concepts and are a matter of choice. They refer to a pattern of behavior and qualities of behavior that we normally associate with being female or being male. Gender is embedded so thoroughly in our institutions, our actions, our beliefs and our desires that it appears to us that uh, you know it is a completely natural phenomenon. For the first time, the term gender was used by psychologist John Money in 1952. In short, the difference between a boy and a girl at birth is sex and gender is as they grow up, society labels them with different roles, opportunities, rights and privileges that lay down the further social differences between women and men. In the famous words of Simon de Beauvoir, Women are not born, they are made. So, gender is the idea of how men, women, boys and girls are expected to communicate and behave in society, while sex is the genetic makeup and physiological characteristics, including genetic makeup, chromosomes, etc. Sex, whether male or female, is essentially a question of biology and genetics, while gender is the cultural and social codes and conventions which are associated with either sex, for example, biology says it is a boy and gender says we'll buy the blue outfit, the train sets or the bat and ball. So gender is not something we are born with and uh, not something we have, but something we do and something we perform. Gender is the basic category we use for identifying human beings and it is also the key issue when discussing representation. The concepts of gender talking about what does it mean to be a boy or a girl are composed of elements of our own identity and the identities we assume other peoples to have. Media plays an important role in establishing these identities by defining and sometimes modifying them. Concept of new media and digital media. That was the idea of sex and gender. So before moving further, let's understand 
new media and digital media. On a basic level, we can say that new media is an amalgamation of all the different forms of media into one, incorporating the elements, ideas, concepts and theories of all the forms of media together. If we want to understand new media in detail, we have to understand new media from three different aspects. The technological aspect, the socio-cultural aspect and the environmental aspect. To understand new media from its technological aspect, new media is completely technology driven and cannot be imagined without the technological advancements in the field of media and communication. Thus, new media basically is a new technology that helps in achieving sustainable development in the field of media and communication. When we talk about development through technological advancements, so what kind of development are we talking about? Are we talking about human development, socio-cultural or environment development? So, in a nutshell, we can say that new media is a convergence of all the different forms of media driven by technological advancements to achieve sustainable socio-cultural and environmental development. So that was new media and now let's talk about digital media. Both new media and digital media are mostly used interchangeably. Digital media is the use of computer technology to combine various forms of media. It is electronic media that works using digital codes to create digital audio, digital video and other digital content. Digital identity is made up of unique identifiers and behavioral patterns that can be tied to the individual, organization or device. Defining digital cultures and digital identities. To define digital media, two concepts are very important to understand. The first concept is digital culture and the other is digital identity. Digital culture is a phenomena where the communication process is facilitated by different digital technologies for exchanging values, thoughts, norms, etc. It deals with how a person interacts with the others using various digital technologies. Thus, digital culture has created a virtual world just like a physical social world where people interact with each other and has changed or updated it to a digitalized networked society. Thus, in the digitalized network society, to communicate, people have started constructing their virtual or digital identities. Identity is something unique and basically tells us who we are. It is a combination of personal history, beliefs, values, behavior, culture, family, society, nation, gender, etc. Identity is important because a person's identity exists in relation to her and his economic, political and societal system. Digital identity refers to the digital information of an individual shared in cyberspace. It is required to maintain the security and privacy of the users. A digital identity is made up of unique identifiers and behavioral pattern that can be tied to an individual, an organization or a device. Digital identity is attitude norms that are blended with technology. Digital identity includes displaying ethical and appropriate attitude while using electronic environments and receiving information about using electronic environments. Digital identities are certifications of users in one respect. They confirm and allow the recipient to certify that an email was really sent by you, like identity cards used in daily life. A digital identity is also used to introduce oneself to the others. Digital identity prevents another users from taking one's place in acting as this person establishing communication and interaction on behalf of this person. While establishing interactions in virtual platforms, it is expected that a user with a digital identity act ethically and collaboratively. In short, digital identity is the combination of different data attributes such as 
username and passwords, email ID, URL, domain name, etc. Digital identity is used for authentication of a particular person's identity in the physical world. However, in today's scenario, passwords and usernames as a digital identity have become less effective due to the intense cybercrime and biometric techniques including facial recognitions, eye or fingerprinting scans uh, are also used as digital identity for accessing secured services and digital interactions. Digital identity can be divided into four categories. First being digital identity as a credential. This includes key information that people traditionally use to identify themselves. This information can be found on government issued documents like driver licenses, passports, birth certificates or health cards. In simple terms, digital identity is the digitized version of an individual's name, date of birth, nationality, passport, etc. The second category is digital identity as a character. This simply means that an individual's self-portrayal on digital platforms. Here, the individual her or himself controls the digital identity themselves. For example, profiles in the social media, career and networking sites, etc. The third category is digital identity as a user. This version is the collection of information related to an individual's digital behavior. It is basically collected by the counterparties with which an individual interacts along with the third parties to whom an individual has given permission. The picture of identity is constructed through an accumulation of actions that reveals habits, interest, preferences and priorities including website visits, online purchase etc. And the fourth category is digital identity as reputation. This digital identity is created by information that is publicly available and created by a reputable third party. This identity is revealed through an individual's history including criminal records, employment history etc. Examine how new media portrays gender. Canadian communication theorist Marshall McLuhan has rightly pointed out that mass media not only give people information and entertainment but also affect people's life by shaping their opinion, their attitudes, their beliefs. The way gender is represented in the media does influence how society perceives gender role. Gender and media, these two concepts are part of our day-to-day -day life. While gender defines our social identity in a larger world, media defines our perception of that larger world. Thus, the two concepts are integral part of human life. With the technological advancements in communication and round-the-clock availability, new media has proved its power to influence a person's thought process as an individual as well as a society. While discussing media and gender, the question that usually come up is do media inculcate and maintain a gender-based role in a society that creates saturation? In a culturally diverse country like India, media has always tried to be rational while covering issues related to gender and in the scenario post-Delhi gang rape of December 2012, Media has been viewed in a positive light in bringing up a sensitive gender issue in the public sphere. While the constant and unnecessary media dwelling of the issue is also criticized widely. In certain gender specific cases, media has been labeled with media hype and intensive intrusion motivated by profit, TRPs leading to insensitive, sensational and trivial coverage of the issues. With its tremendous power of influence, new media can be a good agent for social change by portraying and representing all genders sensitively. The construction of gender through media or simply the portrayal of gender in media has always been evident since the media came into existence and from then with the advancement in technology, 
gender discourses were among the main agenda in the media. Gender is one of the most sensitive social issues that has always thrown new challenges to media from time to time and questioned media's greater responsibility in projecting media sensitively and also sensitizing society towards gender equality. While covering and portraying gender, media has been accused of under-representation of a specific gender, giving unequal spaces or coverage to genders and portrayal of genders with limited roles. While portraying genders, media categorize the stereotype the gender. For instance, women are often portraying as homemakers and caregivers of the family, dependent, vulnerable and objects of the male attention. Similarly, men are also stereotyped as dominant, powerful, bread earner and insensitive, while the third gender is generally portrayed as isolated, shy, scary and scared. Such portrayals can influence the perception of gender in terms of what is expected from women, men and the third gender in the society. This promotes an unbalanced vision of the roles of men, women and the third gender in the society. One of the most notable forms of new media is the social networking sites including Twitter, Facebook, blogging and Instagram. It offers a variety of ways for the users to participate in various discourses and mark their presence. Social media has become a game changer and has tried to be an influential platform for bringing gender rights issue to the attention of the wider public. Social media tries to bridge the gap between the grassroots activism and the policy makers. There are areas in which social media has fostered gender activism. One such popular activism is the hashtag activism where hashtags are used to mobilize the public and grab their attention towards gender rights and issues. Such campaigns are getting popularity and credibility for even those issues which are not highlighted by the mainstream media. So few case studies. One such campaign was the United Nations hashtag he for she campaign which was launched in the year 2014. It focused on the potential of the social media to attract a large number of audiences. The campaign engaged more than 1.2 billion users, highlighting the fact to engage men and boys to achieve gender equality. Some similar wildly popular hashtag campaigns were hashtag my stealthy freedom campaign of 2014, Iran's women protested against the mandatory dress code, Hashtag Love Wins of 2015 campaign for same-sex marriage in the United States. The worldwide popular hashtag Me Too International campaign of 2017 against the sexual abuse of power and assault. The hashtag Ain't No Cinderella campaign of 2018 against the patriarchal structure. Despite all these positive facts of the portrayal of gender in new media, Social media is also reinforcing gender stereotyping. Commercials on social networks are the biggest source of gender stereotyping. Women in most advertisements are portrayed as sex objects and majorly women are projected in the advertisements of domestic and cosmetic products while men are projected in the advertisements related to automobiles, finance and business. Thus. Gender stereotypes and socially constructed gender roles remains the same in both mainstream and social media. The other remarkable way in which new media highlights gender differences is the way new media users showcases themselves on these platforms. Young boys and girls use social media platforms and share content in different ways. While girls share their own pictures, Boys share their pictures and comment to self-promote and sometimes the pictures and comments contains sexual content and reference to alcohol as well. 
This also portrays the gender stereotyping among youngsters where girls' pictures are portraying them as objects and boys' behaviors and patterns are depicting them to be strong and powerful. So this was how new media portray gender and we can summarize it as media portrays gender in a mixed way. While on one hand it tries to project gender genuinely without any bias or stereotype, on the other hand it also portrays gender as a stereotype and biased. There are good case studies that advocate the media's positive role in portraying gender in a proper way. Likewise, new media also projects gender stereotypes and biases. The discourse is endless but needs to be done to find a suitable solution to the situation. Explore the role of digital media in constructing digital identities. Now, as the last section of today's module, let's explore the role of digital media in constructing digital identities. The moment when one participates in digital space, the identity is constructed and the individual begins communicating. On a very basic level, identity is considered as the acknowledgement of an individual's ability to create her or his true self and present it in various situations. Identity is cultivated by the individual but it is also accepted and issued by other members of society. Identity is conceptualized as unique among individuals' persona and it cannot be the same among different people. Thus. A digital identity is a collection of features and characteristics associated with a uniquely identifiable individual stored and authenticated in the digital space and used for transactions, interactions and representations online. The term digital identity indicates the conversion of human identities into machine readable digital data. As the technological advancements have brought severe changes in day-to-day -day activities, it has also brought changes in correspondence and communication patterns in digital media. The basic review after the evolution of the internet on online or digital identity was conceptualized by Truckle in the year 1984. In her experiment to understand how youth represent themselves in offline and online identity. Further, author Dorian Wyszynski and Richard Koine in their book Building the Virtual Communities identified a concept called masking in online digital identity. They explained that when an individual wants to create social connection in the web spaces, they emphasize that individuals try to mask their identity. Masking can be seen in the digital platform in how they write the concept they want to emphasize and what they want to post. The other concept that is associated with digital identity is anonymity, where the user utilizes a really private space of correspondence to specify their identity. This position provides a dilemma about real or mistaken identity. The construction of digital identity is based on personal experience as well as on the perception and recognition of the same by the social environment. The moment when one participates in digital space, the identity is constructed and the individual begins communicating. The potential consequence of the individual's increased online interaction time is that the formation of digital identity not only to interact with the outer world but understanding of self has also affected to a greater degree. Digital media has not only helped people in creating digital identity but to many it has helped to understand themselves to a very greater degree. So with this Let's come to the end of today's session and have a quick look at what we have learned today. In today's session, we understood the concept of gender. We learned how sex is different from gender. Then we understood digital media and digital identities. We also discussed how new media portrays gender. We looked at few case studies of gender-related hashtag activism on social media. 
and we also discuss the role of digital media in constructing digital identities. That's all for today. Keep learning. Thanks and goodbye.